Magenta Canada and CNM Seeds present the Wheat School on RealAgriculture.com. So the primary goal of today's Cedar Clinic is to encourage producers to do a better job seeding, to encourage producers to get the right seeding depth and more consistent seeding depth across the field and across the seeding equipment. This is some research that I was involved in when I worked for the Miles organization back in Kentucky. It's a little over 10 years old now, but it shows and illustrates, I guess, some very important principles. And in this set of data, it's a replicated trial, we actually planted wheat one, two, and four inches deep, okay? In this example, it was with a double disc seeder that actually had uh, a set of conditions that had moisture at all three seeding depths. So moisture was abundant, okay? So when we planted winter wheat at a one inch deep seeding depth, we had an average yield on all reps of 103, just over. When we increased seeding depth to two inches, it dropped the yield by approximately 10 bushels per acre. When the seeding depth was increased to four inches, then it dropped the yield by about 17 bushels per acre. And what's really important, as just as important in most data sets, it's really important to know and understand what the devil in the detail is. What, what were the uh, other interactions that caused these effects? Well, we found, and all of these trials were seeded at 325 seeds per square yard, which is about 1.5 million per acre, not quite, but a rough, rough number. 306 of the 325 that were planted emerged when the seeds were planted at one inch. When the seeding depth was increased to two inches, then 257 of the 325 that were planted emerged. When we increased the seeding depth to four inches, then 221 of the 325 that were planted emerged. So as you increase the seeding depth, then the number of plants that emerged decreased. In addition to that, what we saw, the deeper plants didn't develop as much. They didn't tiller as, lot, as much. So it actually hurts you twice. So when you see deeper, not only do you get less plants emerging, each individual plant actually develops slower. You get less tillers per plant. So it's really important to start with uniform and consistent seeding depth. So you've got uniform head populations at seeding time. So once we've established a uniform population of plants all the way across the field, ideally across different soil types and residue levels, which is a challenge for some, and that's what we've been talking about today, uh, I think one of the biggest opportunities that a lot of producers have is doing variable rate nitrogen. Uh, this is a trial that we did last year. Uh, actually using an optical crop sensing system. There's lots on the market. I'm not here to, to give the advantages and disadvantages of each, but there's a Holland system, which is obviously a very uh, similar, if not identical system to what Ag Leader offers. Hydro or Yara has one, and then there's obviously the Green Seeker. They're all uh, different approaches to a similar theme of crop sensing. And basically what we do with these sensors, we always start out with an enriched strip. That's pretty important. So we're putting a heavy, super high, perhaps 2x what you normally use or, or higher, rate of nitrogen on a field for a reference to get the field as green as possible, maximum amount of chlorophyll, and then we'll use that as a reference to calibrate the system for all other areas within the field. So we'll run a calibration strip or, or more than one calibration strips and the difference in the green strip, the enriched strip, and the difference in the other areas is basically what we use to calibrate it and do the variable rate work. So this is just a simple trial doing alternating strips with flat rate, variable rate, flat rate, variable rate. We've done about three years, at least three years worth of work with these systems now. And we're finding on average yields are increased slightly, but nitrogen application rates have actually been reduced slightly. And the other benefit of these approaches, if you've got some areas of the field that are really green and your chance of lodging is increased, then we're actually putting less nitrogen over the top. So that's actually reducing lodging. If you've got areas of the field that are yellower, for example, a sandier area, perhaps there's not a lot of residual nitrogen, then we're actually putting more on those areas. So in a lot of examples, we're not using more nitrogen. Many were actually using less, but we're just allocating the nitrogen more judiciously to get a better bang for your buck with nitrogen across the field. Mm -hmm.